Well, I hope this is going to be more fruitful than the Google um, the Google option because it's definitely not up to standard, I would think. Okay, so we've got Maraika, we've got Yvette. I can see fix me up well enough to write. Leave me here with a loaded pistol. Mm. She may determine my own fate. Let's see if the others manage to connect me. Didn't have much of the time. It has now. Um, right. Good. That's about all I can do. The rest is up to you. Dagmar, I don't know whether she'll be able to join or not. I haven't seen or heard her. Um, so Thank you, sister. Harry, I don't know where Sorry. she is either. Hi, <coughs> soldier. So we'll give the other Lynn a minute, and then if not, we'll just get stuck. Okay. I think Marika was joining, wasn't she? Marika is is already connected, but she I don't think she. Oh, okay. And she hasn't got a okay. camera. Okay. Um, okay. So. And. Ah oh, yeah, Marika's in now. Yeah, right, Marika's in, just and in it. Lynn is in, and you are in. There's another Lynn to come. Kerry, I don't know where she is, or Dagny. So if the other Lynn can join, then um, we'll just get started. Yeah. And I'm going to have to see another option for this because the Google thing is definitely not on. So I think actually, we will just start now because um, since we've only got 40 minutes on this, I would, if we can't finish it in the 40 minutes, I'll set up a new one. So just hang on and. So do you think I should just start, Yvette? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. I think so because right. okay. if nobody, if maybe they've forgotten or whatever, you know, we don't okay. know. So. Right, well, let's get started then. So you can see the okay. screen, I'm right? Put it yeah, yeah, I'm going to put down the, the TV. Hold on. Okay. Because Marika says that she can hear the, the TV in the background. So I'm going to yes, put it that's down. true. Okay. Right. Okay. Hang on, sorry. So, um, the first question we're going to ask is what is a multi animal household? And the answer to that is quite straightforward, really. That's exactly what it says. Household where two or more animals live together and they can be several dogs or several cats or dogs and cats, rabbits, hamsters, ferrets, bait, birds, snakes, or any other combination of these. So, but since I know all of you and I know that your major concern is dogs, we're just going to concentrate on dogs and cats because I don't think any of you have got rabbits or hamsters. But basically the, um, the procedure would be the same no matter what the species of animal is. So let's look first of all at cats. Cats often have very strong personalities, so having more than one cat may give rise to some problems. For example, sometimes a mother and her offspring don't get along so well because the mother would like the young ones to move on as they probably would do in the wild and set up their own territories. So she can not be very happy if, if the youngsters are kept on um, when they get past a certain age. And Sometimes it's simply that certain cats, just like certain people, don't get along very well together. They have personality clashes. Another thing that can happen is that some cats need more space than others. In fact, cats do need generally quite a lot of personal space. Um, I mean, any of these things that I'm saying can also happen 
can also be um, relevant to dogs. But we'll just concentrate on cats for the moment. So possible problems that may arise is, and one of the main ones is that one of the cats may decide to mark his or her territory. And that can be a very disagreeable thing because of the smell. And it's not just a male behavior. Many females also do it. And they can also do, they can even do it. Lots of people say, oh, well, if you have them castrated, they're not going to mark the territory. That is not true. They will continue to do it. So persistent spraying, particularly in females, may give rise to cystitis. And that means that they would have difficulty urinating and there may be blood in the urine. Now, whatever has to do with cystitis in cats is also true for dogs. So you can bear that in mind as we go along. Um, so what can we do? One important thing to remember in a household where there are several cats is you have to have enough litter trays. There has to be one litter tray at least per cat because they are not often very fond of sharing their litter trays. But sometimes that is not enough. So when you have a problem of spraying, bitter almond oil can be useful for that. But remember, you have to remember that this oil is highly corrosive and should not come into contact with the mucous membranes. So the cat should only be allowed to sniff the oil and or a dog for that matter, if it's got cystitis. Um, then, um, but make sure that your hand is protecting the cap of the bottle so that none of the oil gets onto the nose or, and so it would be very irritating to the mucous membranes. Um, when cystitis is an accompanying problem to the spraying, then the homeopathic remedy Cantharis is highly recommended, and this is good for dogs, cats, horses, people, whoever. So Cantharis is a great remedy where there is um, a problem of cystitis. Um, often the root cause of this disagreeable behavior of spraying is that the cat is either anxious or afraid, and so we've got to go back to our oils that we've been looking at over the past couple of webinars for these conditions. So from, we'll be, I'll put it again on the next slide so you can have a, just a reminder. From the tea touch perspective, we can use body and or head wraps, which also relieve anxiety and do body work, such as hair slides, zebra touch. Can you remember which one that is? The zebra touch. Remember, that's the one that goes up over the body and down the other side, as if like the striped okay. zebra's body. Then yeah. you've got circular touches, any of the circular touches, and the turtle touch. Remember, the turtle touch yeah. um, is the one that goes, two hands are moving on either side of the body, like the old-fashioned trains, how the, how the thing used to work on trains. Um, so yeah. they've got one hand moving um, forward while the other's moving back, that sort of movement. Um, so any of these things would help to relieve anxiety. If you've got any questions to ask while I'm going, don't just jump in and ask them. So then if we look again at our list of oils, we've got the major oils, the principal ones, or they can be floral waters as well. You've got the bergamot, copaiba, frankincense, geranium, German chamomile, hemp, hops, linden blossom, marjoram, neroli, orange, Roman chamomile, St. John's wort, spikenard, valerian, and vetiver. So we've got a huge selection there, which of course, not, they're not going to take all of them, but they might choose one. And then we've got our supporting oils. And with cats, remember that cats often have a vitamin B deficiency. And vitamin B deficiency affects directly the nervous system. So one good way to help deal with that is the spirulina, because spirulina has, contains vitamin B, and that would help to relieve that deficiency in the cats, which is quite common. And then you've got the other ones. Um, tobacco, remember, is one that would, um, it affects cognitive function. So when animals are just reacting rather than acting and thinking, then tobacco is a good one because it brings them back into thinking mode. And of course, lavender, which is a relaxing one, coconut, barley grass, which um, is, has similar properties to spirulina. And if you remember, 
horses are more likely to take that than they are likely to take spirulina because spirulina has got too high a protein content. And then oils for emotional release, you know these, basically angelica root, rose, either the rose auto or rose absolute or in a floral water, and also the yarrow oil. Um, so that's the major problem I think you would get with um, cats. Um, that they need more personal space and if they don't have enough personal space then they, you may get this territorial marking going on with spraying which can lead to cystitis. So basically what you have to do there is deal with the anxiety that um, living in too close quarters um, brings about for the cats. But remember the same thing can also apply to dogs. So now let's look at dogs. Well we all know dogs each dog has its own personality and its own traits. So each animal is a universe in itself. So we must observe to see which things are important to each one. Because this whole story that we've been fed for years and years about this hierarchy in dogs in the household and so on, that's not, that doesn't hold true. Because for one dog, um, and we'll be looking at this in a minute. Each one is going to have its own um, priorities and we'll see what they might be. And we've also got to look at the relationship between the dogs. Um, if you've got more than two dogs, then um, you can find that if it's a male and a female, they might get on very well. If there are two females, then they might not get on so well. Males, two males, two males tend to get on better than two females. And I think that's probably pretty similar to how it is in, in human terms as well. Um, so the thing is to observe what are the priorities of each one and what are, is the relationship between the dogs. So what kinds of situations um, might we find? And since I, I did ask each one of you if you had any particular issues that you wanted me to um, address and nobody did give me any, so I've just put down the things that I have thought are important. So if you can think of any afterwards that you would think I haven't included, then you can let me know and we can go on and deal with those. So one dog may give a great deal of importance to food and may guard food and may not want other dogs coming close while it's being fed or when there is food around. Another one may feel that the most important thing in the world is to get to lie on the sofa, whereas the other one couldn't care less. Another one may feel the need to be as close as possible to you at all times. Whereas another one may not feel that that's quite so important. One dog may be noise reactive and alert the others to any stimulus that is going on outside or inside the home. And for example, on walks, one dog may react to other dogs and that may stimulate the others to respond to the call of the first one. And one or more dogs also may react to the presence of the cats. So these, I think, are probably the major things that we're likely to find happening with dogs um, living together. So um, let's look at the question of food. Um, some dogs are really highly motivated by food and some are obsessive about food. And this may lead to incidents with other animals in the home. For example, one of these little um, mini pinchers that I've got, the mother, because she was used as a breeding bitch, and I think she um, was not um, I think food might have been scarce when she was having all these puppies. Um, she is totally obsessive about food. So you have to, I have to be on the alert for her because she would, first of all, she will just snaffle anything that she comes across and she doesn't mind whether it's vegetables. I think about, she's only, there are only about three things that she doesn't want to eat. One is raw onion, raw garlic and celery. Apart from that, everything else she, that I've ever offered her, she's eaten it. So when you have that situation, this may require some management strategies while you work with the dog to find more acceptable behavior. So this may involve, for example, um, feeding that dog in a place where he or she um, can deal with their own food, but not be able to attack everyone else's food, particularly since they tend to um, eat really quickly and the other dogs in the household may eat more slowly. So part of this management strategy 
would probably involve ensuring that each dog has its own space so that the slow eaters have time to finish their food before being assaulted by the gobblers. And another useful thing are the special dishes you can get, which have, um, some of them are like grass growing up um, in the middle of the dish, or they have divisions so that the dog cannot just vacuum up the food um, and, and it forces them to eat more slowly. And at the same time, as you're managing, you have this management strategy in place, it's advisable to introduce a routine when the dogs learn to have patience and respect the others, other dog's space and the other dog's food. So then the next thing that you might encounter is um, reactivity between the dogs in the household. Um, most reactivity within the home between dogs who live together is ritualized and harmless. So they will, maybe one will growl and the other one knows, okay, he doesn't want me to go in there, I'll go off and do something else. So they've, they've usually got, they usually understand each other pretty well. But sometimes it may escalate, and this may be particularly true if the dog is involved, like introduce a new puppy. Um, and it's also important, and I know that Lynn Hall in the UK, Lynn fosters. So when um, new foster dogs come into the home, that this means that there are continued, there could be continual changes in the household makeup. And that, that can be a destabilizing factor for the dogs, the, the family dogs, let's say. So this business of um, knowing that something is, um, is not a threat, but dealing with change. So we'll be looking at that in a minute. So where you've got a new puppy coming in, or when you've got fosters coming in, um, or also um, when a dog reaches, um, maybe okay while it's a very little puppy, but when it reaches sexual maturity around six months or so, then that the problems might begin then. So in these situations, the reactivity may be due to the dogs feeling anxious because they're unable to cope with the constant changes that are going on in the home. Um, and then, as I mentioned, another flashpoint might be when a young dog reaches sexual maturity and begins to display adolescent behaviors, which as we know, it doesn't matter whether it's a dog, a cat or a human, adolescence can be pretty obnoxious at times. And this may be a source of aggravation for older dogs. So this type of reactivity, as we've mentioned a little bit earlier, may be more generally seen in same-sex pairs, and particularly between two females. And I have unfortunately witnessed um, some years ago when living in Puerto de Santa Maria, our neighbor had um, an old dog, and then she took on a brother and sister. Um, and the, when the young female uh, reached a certain age, he became reactive towards the old girl, and that he killed her in the garden. So that was a pretty disagreeable thing, and it was unfortunately, it was unfortunate because the neighbor um, didn't, um, wasn't on the ball there, and she was uh, going to have to because I can hear you from the foundation. I mean, you bet. So I'm going to So can you put that down? I can't, 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 you're hearing on the... So then other common triggers to avoid, can you all hear me now? Um, I hope you can all hear me still. Um, so we've got um, common triggers to that we should try to avoid are the presence of food, um, the presence of toys, um, proximity to the owner, high arousal situations such as greetings or preparations to leave, um, and being together in a confined space such as a narrow hallway or someplace like that. So um, 
when depending on what the, the source of the problem is, then you should try to avoid those things that if two dogs are not getting on so well together, you don't want to have them closed up in a narrow hallway, for example. So how can we help them then? If the, um, if the, un, uh, now who is Donna? I'm not sure. I don't think she's saying that. Um, if the underlying cause is perceived to be fear or anxiety, then the same remedy as we saw for cats would be appropriate. So that was what we saw in slide seven. Other approaches would be to use, again, to touch wraps and bodywork. And a major tool uh, would be tea touch groundwork. As seen in the previous webinars, this helps the dogs involved learn self-control and self-confidence. So um, last, when we were on the last webinar, or webinar on reactivity, um, if the, the major issue is dog-to-dog react, -dog reactivity, then the same techniques that we saw in depth in that webinar using groundwork and a stuffed dog to begin with would also be an important resource to exploit. And you can, if you, even if it's not dog-to-dog -dog reactivity, you can, um, if it's food or toys or any of those things, you can still do that same um, groundwork exercise, just substituting the stuffed dog um, for food, toys, or whatever it is, so that the animal learns to um, have, to remain under threshold and control its reactive um, behavior in the presence of these things. So then another thing would be jealousy. So in general, what we interpret as jealousy, even in humans, is normally or can very often be an emotion based on fear. It's fear of the loss of the presence of the owner or handler or loss of the attention of the owner or handler. And in people-to-people -people relationships is pretty much the same thing. So again, we would use the tools that we have at our disposal, or just frankincense or any of the anxiety ones, but if, if it's fear, major fear, then frankincense would be one of the go-to um, Then our body wraps and groundwork. So when you're doing the groundwork, then remember, do you all remember um, the configurations using um, homing pigeon? Can you remember that? Where two people would work with the dog, both attached, one attached, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? one attached to the front ring, one attached to the back ring. And yeah. um, that would be a good way to get the dog to accept the presence of another person and not merely be with its own owner then you can go on to the next one which would be what we call the clothes line but they now call it the bee line and um, putting a piece of rope through the back ring and the dog can move sliding along that ring with one person at either side so it can choose to be nearer or further away from its owner so these are ways of weaning the dog off um, the presence of the owner because it knows that it can choose. And so that's a good one um, to use in the groundwork. Those the one with the homing pigeon and with the sliding rope. <clears throat> because the idea here is to let the dog understand that he or she is not going to lose out on attention. So but if the dog but we must never take the dog away by force from its owner. We've got to work very slowly and it should always be allowed to come back to the owner and when it goes and the owner should be absolutely neutral. Um, when, uh, for example, remember we did on one of the, the courses we did one with a chair, the person sat on the chair and someone else took the dog away a little bit, brought it back a little bit, brought it, a little bit, brought it back a little bit and the owner should remain absolutely neutral then so that the dog realizes that the owner is not going to be going away forever and it's not going to lose that person's attention. 
but if you're living in a household with um, several dogs and it's difficult to give them all um, 100% attention. I mean, this is really hard. So particularly if one of the dogs has been used to being on its own before and suddenly it finds that it's um, got all these other dogs taking up space, then it's important to give that dog some quality time on its own, like going for walks on its own with the owner and doing activities one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I've been doing this with, um, with Sasha because Sasha, of course, my beardy, was used to being the only dog in the family um, just with accompanying cats unt until the two little mini pinchers came on the scene. So he's very good with them. He has allowed them to take over everything, his food, his beds, his space, everything. Because of that, I have been important for him to have at certain times of the day and to have a little bit of space on his own and from time to time to go out for a walk on his own and to do activities on his own so that he realizes that his position has not been usurped by the arrival of these other dogs. So how about dogs and cats together? As we know, every animal has its own personality. We've just said that. And some will naturally get on better than others. And a lot may depend on the breed characteristics of the animals as well. Cats, like children, can have quick darting movements, um, which some dogs with a high chase drive may find irresistible. And the cats may react in two ways to this. They can either run away or they can stand their ground and swipe at the dog at the earliest opportunity. Now, if, you, if they are indoor cats and they're not allowed out, then running away is really not much of an option because they don't really have that much space to run away to. So they might stand their ground. Um, and it's also interesting to see how um, cats can interpret the behavior of the dogs. For example, in the case of my house, um, the cats do not trust the mini pinchers, not even as far as they could send, take one step forward. Because, of the, because in this case, the mini pinchers have quick darting movements and the cats find that um, threatening. On the other hand, all of the cats come to the bearded collie, they rub up against him, they go under his legs, they climb up on his back, they do all kinds of things. And that's despite the fact that he is a boisterous dog and bounces about a lot, but his movements are not those quick um, sort of hunting, seeking movements that you get in the mini pinterest. So um, observing the different um, attitudes and the different movement patterns can be important when you're trying to sort out these problems. So as it's probably easier to teach dogs than to teach cats, the best strategy is probably to work using both your essential oils, key touch body work, wraps and ground work, similar to what we discussed on the reactivity webinar. But instead of using a stuffed dog, use a stuffed cat. And if you can bring a friend in um, to help sort of move the cat around um, like as if it were a puppet, um, then once you get to the stage of when the cat is no longer stationary and getting the cat, the stuffed cat to move, then that can be a helpful thing as the dog progresses in getting used to um, dealing with the, as the dog gets used to dealing with the cats. So those are the major things that I have thought would be important in multi-animal households. Is there anything that any of you has, um, things that I should have talked about, then you can please let me know. I think we've still got a few minutes before this um, goes on. So I know we've only got 40 minutes on this. Um, so if you can let me know what you, if you've got any other issues that you think we could be dealing with, then you can let me know. And do them later on.
But I, can, I know she can't speak at the moment. So Yvette, have you got anything to say? Oh gosh. No. We're going to be giving more oh. So um, if you've got anything that you think that we should, that, uh, that you would like me to discuss, then. Uh... No, I, I um, there was a bit there when you when you said a little while ago. Um, about the they get stressed with the noise, the yeah. noise, um, the stimulus of the outside noise. Um, that is what I'm having most of a most most of a problem at the moment because Vince is really chilled and Vince is the only thing that riles him up is food. Or mm. when I get in and he gets really excited when I get in, or when he's we're, we're going we're going out. You know what I mean? He gets yes. really really wound up. Well, wound up. I think it's more like because Bella gets wound up as well. So I think it's between mm. the both of them. Yeah. So he he doesn't bother with the noise. So that, he, that is not an issue. Um, but I'm I'm worried about the um, the the leaving the house, even though I am. I am like scattering treats and making it into a more relaxed kind of thing. Well, treats, food, um, and I'm putting the harness on, and then we're just showing it with. I try the sensitization by showing the harness, and then um, walking out, and then some showing the 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 lead. What happens is at the moment I pick up the harness, it becomes an overwhelming, overwhelmingly like high excitement. Yeah. But normally, if um, if if, if it, I normally take Bella and Sky, uh, sorry, Bella and Sky, uh, Bella and Vince out together because they're they're easier to walk, much easier together. They to walk really well. Um, and the, the reactivity is not reactivity; it's like high arousal. You know what I mean? That's what high right. arousal so happens with how them. How about then. have you tried doing when you bring out the harness? Have you mm -hmm. tried doing body work? before you put it on no no i haven't no well maybe and have you tried have you tried offering him oils not necessarily when you're going out but at any time yes yes right he's so what oil do you take well he's he's um uh what's it called um bergamot bergamot right bergamot mostly that's it he's not very much into oils to tell you the right. truth have he's, you um, have you offered him any oils not to sniff but to to ingest? No, he doesn't. He's not interested. He's not interested. No, right. not, okay. not interested at all. At all. Okay. Um, the, the the thing is, the contrary to to was called was very very different. He wanted. He liked everything. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> he used to have absolutely everything, but he's not interested. He just sort of smells it and he or, or just licks it and oh, he's not happy and he walks off. You know, he's he's not so much stressed. I don't find him as stressed he as he is. Like I think he's, he's, he reacts to certain stimuli. stimuli. Right. And the stimuli okay. would be walking out. But, funnily enough, I think that it's not so much when he is alone. When he is alone, he's fine. Yes. The problem is so, because he's got Bella. Right. So he's the two, he's feeding off her. Yes, yes, definitely. Most definitely. Right. Okay. Now, how about Bella then? When he is getting excited, is she getting excited first or not? Yes, yeah, because she, I, the moment that the the moment that they they see one harness or the other, obviously this, they have two different colors. You know what I mean? So, um, Bella, uh, um, the moment Ben sees the harness, he puts it on. He gets excited, but he's put it on, and um, it's not so much the problem as when Bella sees the the harness, she starts like. Walking around the house and she starts like chattering. You can see her like uh, uh, this, you know what I mean? You can see she's, it's a highly stressed situation for her. Um, but then after a couple of times of doing that, she puts, back and she puts it on. But then, of course, they both, they've got the, the, the uh, yeah, dynamics that they do. It's quite, yeah, the stimulation so, is quite high for both of them. Right. So, does Bella take oils? Um, yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, not not as much as she used to, but yeah, she still does. Which ones would? Which ones of the relaxing oils? Which ones would she take? The um, 
Oh, the what's it called? Um, oh my God, the um, with the L. Um, Yarrow? No. Hops? No, 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 no. With Can the L. With... No. Um, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to remember what it's called. It's a uh, Tila. Um, Linden Blossom. That's it. Linden Blossom. Right. Okay. So Tila. Yeah, <laughs> Okay, right. So then one strategy you could you could start is since Vince is not so interested in the oils at the moment, but don't give up on him because you might find that after a certain amount of time he will become interested in them. But for the moment, with Bella, you could start before you go out, before you produce the harnesses even, um, you could offer her oils and just do and do a little bit of oil with her and do like ear strokes and ear slides with of tea touch body work yeah that sort of thing with her and then um you can even put on a wrap before you put on the harness okay right so if if you think if you find that vince is calmer you can put his harness on first yeah. Without Bella seeing. This is what I do. Yeah. Right. This is what I do. If, have you got a hallway? No, but well, the thing is that we've moved, we've, we've moved from where we were in Savai, we've moved to Himela now. And, oh, right. um, okay, the so house that is, that's another a bit of upheaval as well. Right. So, right. so the, house in, is, the house in Savai was more problematic because there was a gate and the gate made the noise and the noise of the gate used to get them really worked up all of them right there's no gate now there's a manual one that you just open and it's it's more relaxed in that respect mm, okay so um then you've got several factors there then either you've got the change of environment yeah so you the oil that you might be offering them there is violet leaf so they can yeah. live with that change. Then we yeah. can isolate them for the moment, get Vince's harness on in one place, then go to Bella, offer her her oil, like say the Tila that she likes. Yeah. If necessary, put on a, a wrap and then put on the And only then bring them both together to go out on their walk. You might try doing that. Try different. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's and a really good idea, actually. That's not the right one. are not going to be feeding off each other. Yep, I think that the, it's, uh, the harness, I will completely correct. If I put the harness in another part of the house, yes. and I put one, they won't notice that the harness is on. Um, but but it, it, it's true, the difference is could well be that. Yeah. Right, so try that and see how you go with that. So. Has anybody else got anything to add, question or whatever? Lynn, are you? Marika, I know she can't speak, but she's not got a multi-animal household anyway. So Marika said, Marika, uh, Mary, Marika has said something about um, uh, Carrie's dogs, but I can't see it now. Oh, right. Where is it on the chat? I can't see the chat now. But uh, I, she did say something. She did say something. I can't see it now. <laughs> oh, let, hang on a minute. Uh, let's see. Carrie. Oh, no, no, I can see it. Because her friend's partner, partner, but I wonder, could she carry off her oils and any other tools one by one? So separate them. Uh, would, would carry off her oil separate and all other tools? Right, okay. Um, I understand then, should Kerry be offering the oils to each dog separately? Yes, I would say so. When she's going to do a session, if she can um, separate, take the dog that she's going to be working with into a quiet place, like we said on the course, always try to have a quiet place. But if she can take that dog 
on its own and do the session with that dog on its own, um, then I think that's the best way to go. Now, I know, um, if I remember correctly, Kerry's house, she can probably take them even into the bathroom or into a bedroom, um, something like that. So I would say, yes, she should. Um, I would say that it's best because it also gives that dog a sense of having quality time. Um, and then also, in, in the multi-dog household, um, yes, everything. She, as I said in the last webinar as well, it's always a good idea to pull all your resources. Use all the resources you have at your disposal. So use your oil, use your tea touch, and you can do, when you're offering the oils, don't do tea touch. Because what you want is to see the animal's response, the dog's response to that oil. And if you are putting in another um, a factor, which would be body work, then you may not be seeing exactly what that dog's response is. Um, then, um, can it be extra complicated when offering oil for all our presents? Yes, absolutely. If all the dogs are there, I can't remember how many dogs Kerry's got. I will well, see that one of them passed away just not uh, four, right? She's got four. So four dogs together when to do an oil session is not a good idea, really, because they all know each other and they're well, all trying to get in. So I would say definitely I would advise, and this is what I do too, uh, whoever is going to be getting the oils, I take that dog into a separate room and offer the oils there. Tea touch can be a different thing. Although if the animals are, if being in the presence of Kerry, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is a major um, factor in the reactivity of the dogs in the household, then if they see that one dog is getting a lot more attention and the other three are not, then that may not be the best thing when you're going to do your tea touch. So I would again take the one that I'm going to work with into a separate room and do the work with that dog alone. And then if you work it round, giving them each turns, then they would all begin to understand that each one of them is going to get some special quality time with Kerry and that will just become part of the routine. So if you could pass that on then to Kerry, um, Marika, that would be really good. But definitely work the oil separately, work the tea touch separately um, and give them a little bit of quality time to each one. If anybody else has got, um, Lynn, I don't know if you've got anything to ask. I have an awful lot of feedback with the sound coming in my ears, Mary, oh, which has oh, uh, been making it hard to hear. Oh, sorry. No, no. <laughs> but I've got ear earphones in at the moment. Oh. Um, so did you not hear what I was saying then? I've, I've heard a lot of it, but not all of it. Not um, all of it. Right. Okay. Well, I'll be putting it up. Um, so that you can review it. I'll let you know um, when it's available and hopefully at least the, re the review would be available. So, um, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, the other Lynn didn't manage to get in. I wonder what happened. No, neither did Pauline. I think she wanted to come on. Right, uh, then, then I may have to um, repeat this one then. Um, right. But have you got any questions, Lynn, that you would like to ask? Because I know you have the question of fostering in your heart. I do. <laughs> I do. And I have and, a new one that's just arrived as well. Yeah, because as I was mentioning, that can be a source of anxiety for the family dogs um, when you've got new ones coming in and right. a sort of a turnover, which is upsetting the routine. Um, are there any issues that you find um it depends on the dog that i'm yes. fetching in yes inevitably um 
The one I have now is very, very shut down, totally shut down, absolutely terrified. Oh, right. But the others, I think, because this one is number 12, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're getting very, very used to it, and they're being exceptionally good with this one and giving this one space. Yeah. Um, Reva occasionally has a little growl mm. when we're out because I've only had this one a couple of days and we're just getting into the walks and mm. things like that. Yeah. yeah. He, he, prompts, he prompts this new dog. Um, a little growl here and there, but that's as far as it goes. And if I ask him to move away, he does. Yeah, because it's, it's ritualised, the growling. It's yeah. Not, yes. Okay. And, and also that's it. When they're used to having when they get used to having other dogs coming in then right. they can actually be acting as therapy dogs as well i would say so this time they're getting awfully good at it mary yes yes <laughs> that's right so um, okay so what i think what we can do here is uh, if i stop this now and um then i will i'll try and put up the recording so that the other Lynn and Pauline yeah. Yeah. Um, can can come, and I'll so you'll be able to listen to it again. Yeah. For anything that you missed, because we did have, um, I think it was uh, Yvette's husband had the TV on in the background, <laughs> and that was coming through mm -hmm. uh, on her sound. So. If in the meantime, if anybody's got any questions that they can think of afterwards, then you can send them to me and I'll try and deal with them. And the other thing I want to say is because we've had so many mix-ups with this one, the next webinar, I'm going to go offer it to you free as a thank you for putting up with all this nonsense. And also, if you could <coughs> um, let me know which subject uh, you would like me to deal with next time around, <coughs> then um, I'll do, I'll deal with that topic that most of you do. So, castration. Oh, okay, how is Vince Marika? Oh, good. And he's recovered okay from his operation? <laughs> oh, I don't think he knows yet. Yeah, but he's not licking it or anything. Oh, that's great. Okay, so because um, Marika has a new dog, Vince, he's very quite excitable, and um, he was just castrated the other day, but he doesn't seem to have realised that it's happened, so that's good. Okay, so castration is a topic that Marika is suggesting, if anyone else has anything to say. And Marika, if you can pass that on to Kerry and tell, him, tell her I'm very sorry about her friend. Um, if she has anything to ask or to suggest, then to, let, to get it back to me and I will we'll try and sort this out. Because, <coughs> excuse me. In this week, in fact, the technician didn't manage to do anything because he was too busy. Um, so, <coughs> but I think this Google Hangouts thing is definitely not a good idea. It doesn't seem to work the way it's supposed to. So, thank you very much, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you, Mary. Bye. Bye, bye, Lynn. Nice to see your face again. <laughs> thank okay. you. I, I would. I have some questions. I will send them to you. Oh, you have questions. And I do. You can have ask them now if you like. Um. Okay. He, he's living in a multi-dog household. Okay. We have an elderly chinchilla lady. Yeah. And, uh, I used to have about seven chinchillas, but over the years, we left, we left with one. And each evening, uh, we let her out of her cage to run around a pen. Well, we've done this for years. This, it's their time of night. Now, um, I have three dogs that are mine. Uh, Sweep and Reva, who you've met. Yeah. Reva was a collie. And I also have a, a collie bitch who was an ex-working dog, or very young when I got her. Hmm. Now, when the pen comes out, Sweep 
it's his job to look at that chinchilla the whole time she is out. Mm. Reva is now what I call he's head of my pack in the house. Mm. <clears throat> now he he, uh, he seems to overall look look over everyone, mm. and each mm. evening he comes out and he barks at the chinchilla for no other reason. Well, I, I haven't figured out exactly what the reason is. But I can ask him to sit and I can move him out of the room. But he does this every night. And because he barks, yeah. my collie bitch barks as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like a knock-on effect. Anyone who doesn't bark is sweet. Yeah. Who uses it like a TV? It's his show every night. <laughs> <he watches. laughs> Bless him. But Reva isn't bothered as long. He only does this while I am at the pen. Yeah. And seeing to the food and the water and yes. the shelves. And as soon as I go away, he moves away and not another thing is said. Yes. And the thing is, it's, it's now got to the stage where Tess, the collie bitch who doesn't look at the chinchilla, she'll often bark as soon as we get up and go to the pen now. It's like she's starting it up. Right, okay. So she's learned that behaviour and she's now... Putting it in rather than waiting for Reba to um, instigate it. <clears throat> yes. He's instigating it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So in Reba's case, it seems like if, if he stops, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if he stops barking when you move away from mm -hmm. the cage, then that seems to me like a, a jealousy that he's not. Like he, he is kind of anxious that he's losing your attention. He's definitely so, anxious. Yes. So I would um, they I would work with that like it we I mentioned it um, in the in the webinar talking about and um, the jealousy factor offering him oils um, like for example um, frankincense because that's uh -huh jealousy being a, a stage away from fear of losing the person or losing that person's attention. So frankincense, you can also offer violet leaf for the change factor. Um, and then um, if he starts barking when you move away from that cage, then that's him saying, okay, I'm getting her back now. Um, now that the other dog the, the collie bitch is beginning to bark, then that I think is a different thing because for her, it's just a stimulus. Um, the movements of the chinchilla, do they, have you noticed that the movements are a factor in response? No. No. It's not. No, it, it's not. It's definitely when I move, so as soon as I make my move each evening to go to the cage, Reva will come up. Now, I've moved him away. I've kept him away. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, when he gets to the kitchen, it's like he's waking everything up. He, he wants to yeah. write, okay, my mum's here. You yeah. have to wake up and get on with it. Hang on a minute. I've got to put the light on. Marika can't see me. She says it's dark. Right, light is on again. Yeah. Um, I've been... I've been through a lot of scenarios with him, Mary. I've, I've made him stop and just sit. Yeah. Talk quietly. I've moved slowly. Yes. Um, sometimes that works. Yeah. But I'm not always... I do have somebody else occasionally goes to the pen and he'll start up again with them. It's this movement to the pen yeah. to start, start it off. And then when they move away, he moves away. Yeah, I, I think it's... I think that's um, fear of losing attention. Um... For example, I've got at the moment two horses. They're not mine, but I'm looking after them. So um, my bearded collie barks when he sees that I'm getting the wheelbarrow to go and take them their hay and stuff. So that is definitely his way of letting me know that he's not happy that these two horses are going to be getting my attention and not him. So I think... If you work on that and use your wraps as well, Lynn, yeah. and do, do some body work, like ear work. And in the case of the barking, remember we had, and I mentioned it in the last webinar, 
um, the um, farming ban. Remember the eleven. Yeah. That you put around the neck and then make a figure of eight and put it over the muzzle. Yeah. Use that with them as well, because that draws their attention to their mouths and can help reduce barking. Your body wraps as well, head wrap. Try all of these things, see which one would work. And then I would be interested to know what the upshot is. Um, if you, if which one would work for each one. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Um. I will. I'll, I'll think of them all. I do have a little video I may want to send you to ask what's going on. Right. Okay. So when you, whenever you've thought of your questions and you want to send the video, then I will um, try and answer the best I can, and I will distribute the answers to all the people who, uh, to you and everyone else, and even to the ones who didn't manage to make it. Um, and as soon as I've got this thing sorted out. Um, to put the recording, make the recording available. I think it's, it remains available for three days after once I put it up. Um, right. So I'll let you all know and you can check in there and I will answer your questions the best I can. Um, because I know it's not always easy to think of them if you, unless you write them down beforehand. <laughs> and we're not always that much on the ball. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Okay, so thank you again. And as I said, please send me any issues you would like to cover. And for the moment, I've got castration from Marika. And the next, the next webinar will be um, free because I'm really annoyed with the business of, the, of, them not, of it not working properly. So I feel really bad about that. So next one will be free, okay? So I hope you thank have, you, Mary. Thank you. I hope you have a nice evening. And you too. And where are you in Jimena, Yvette, now? Um, it's actually at the entrance of, of Los Angeles, you know, oh, yeah. uh, where the train station is. Yes, it's yes. The, you know, there's a convent. Uh, well, uh, it's a convent. It's um, a f sort of convent. It's a bit, it's a church. It's yes. uh, a sanctuario. And um, basically, it's behind that on a lane going down. It's situated in the countryside. It's, it's, it's lovely. It's really, really nice. Very relaxed. But you do get a lot of people passing by in horseback. And uh, you do get people walking the dog. So the noise sensitivity issue is there with the... Sometimes you get the hunter's dogs, you know. So the, the yeah, church bells are that. lately for some reason. Yeah. The church oh. bells lately is, is getting... Uh, little bit to Bella as well but I think it's also a change of the that's a question I'll ask you when on on the private I'll, I'll send you a, um, okay, a question no, get her in that. violet leaf definitely yeah Def you. yeah 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 most definitely yeah <laughs> okay then so well, thank you very much things, I'll answer them as best I can and I'll yeah, put, thank you. you can listen to it again if you want okay thank you so thank you Mary bye bye Bye, Mariah. Bye, bye. I know you can't speak. Bye. 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 <laughs>